Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft. Today I'm going to be painting for you a chimp in pastels on black velour, working from this photograph. Uh, the photograph I'm using was taken quite a few years ago, and sadly it came out sort of overexposed, not too much detail, a little bit dark in places. And in this case it happened to work for my benefit because I then got the idea of turning this photograph into something with a bit more atmosphere. One thing that strikes me particularly about this photograph is the soulful look in the chimp's eyes. And I think when you're painting an animal portrait, you always should try to go for not just expression, but almost a soulful look behind the expression. I've done a preliminary sketch for my benefit with a white watercolour pencil. So what I'm going to do uh, is more of a preparatory kind of detailed sketch using a hard white pastel. I just begin to work over the initial sketch and create some more rounded features and some lighter tones. One thing you have to be aware of when working with black velour is that it absorbs colour very, very easily. So even though you think this is coming out fairly light, once I actually rub the pastel into the paper to secure it with my fingers, you'll see it fades away quite quickly, which means even on a preparatory sketch such as this, you have to do a couple, maybe even three layers to get the strength of tones that you want throughout the painting. Now, what I'm doing at this point is simply starting to indicate the key highlights. If you squint at it, remember squinting always helps you to see tones better. It blurs out all the detail. So I squint at it, I can now see uh, the tone is getting there, the expression is just about there in a very simple way. So it gives me something to work on. Whenever you're sketching out for a painting, always start with a fairly loose sketch, especially if it's animals or people. The looser you are with the sketch, the more natural your subject becomes. So there's nothing too careful about it. If you want to add careful details, you can do that later on. So, this is all nice and loose for me at the moment. I don't want to do any more than that. I don't want to destroy the vibrancy of that initial sketch. So I'm going to stop in a moment before I start to overwork it, which is always a danger at this stage. And once I'm happy, everything's in the right place. I've got the necessary highlights almost settled where they, where they probably will end up. And then I can stop and start to add some layers of color on top of that. Okay, so now I've finished the initial sketch in white pastel. I've now changed my glasses because I want to do some more close-up work on this. What I want to do is lay down some basic colours. So let's begin with a cool colour, which is uh, dark Prussian blue. And I'm going to begin by placing this colour in a fairly loose way around the ear. As soon as I start to rub the pastel into the paper to hold it there, the colour will fade a little bit. But we can put another layer on if we need to, so don't worry about that too much. Then moving around, we've got a little bit of uh, cool shadow in this area. We have to remember so our light source is coming from the top left, which means that anything on the right-hand side of the painting is going to be more or less in shadow. So with the blue, we can begin the more definite shaping of features, such as the eye, the eyebrow ridge, a little bit of a patch of almost bare skin in the forehead and so on. Don't be frightened to use uh, strong colours in your portraits, animals or people. Mostly, this colour will just end up as a background tone. It'll be very subtle in the end. But even if that's not the case, then it's sometimes nice to have strong, vibrant colours in your portrait. It almost gives it extra life. Stroking the pastel in the direction of the fur growth, in this case, the direction of the lines on the upper lip. And of course, chimps, like other apes, are very prominent, rounded upper lips. The lips themselves, this bit I'm doing now, are black but again, a blue-black, so we need that cool colour underneath. And we have a little bit of blue under this eye, and just above the eye too. So we'll give it a good rub. Now the rub not only settles the pastel into the paper and stops it falling off, but also it softens your edges. So we don't want any hard edges either on the chimp, because it's all skin and fur. That is pretty much, I think, all of my shadow areas covered. I'll just add a little bit more blue on the lighter part of the ear at the top, around the top part of the nose and just underneath. Of course, at any time throughout the painting, if you need to add more colour, you can do that. OK, so that looks like the end of my blue stage. OK, so now let's move on to the next tone, which are the warm highlights. What I can do now is take a, a sanguine soft pastel. I'll start off around the head here, and what I can start to 
create is almost a backlighting against the side and the top of the head. And I'll just rub that in with my finger to push the pastel into the paper, of course, as before. Same on the ear on the opposite side. We can just see the tip of the ear there, so I'll give that a little dusting of the red-brown colour as well. Coming down to the forehead, all this is highlighted, of course, and we can start to create more of a precise structure of the brow now. I want to keep the, those chunky shapes. And this is what this blocking out of colour helps you to achieve. We rub it in to push the pastel into the paper, make the edges nice and soft. So we come down the brow just to the edge of the eye. We do have uh, one or two dark shadows around the eyes that are quite dark, almost black in fact. Um, it doesn't matter at this stage if you go over these very dark areas with your uh, blue and your black. So don't worry about losing those creases around the face. So we have a little uh, sanguine highlight down the three ridges in the nose. Less as you come towards the right hand side of course, which is mostly in shadow. And use your finger to almost shape the, uh, the ridges in the nose. You can't blend the pastel as such as I've said, but you can guide the excess pastel dust a little bit and create those shapes. You should always be thinking about these shapes anyway, whether you're painting a, a person portrait or any other kind of animal. If you start to work your fingers in the direction of the fur growth, the way the skin, then you start to get an understanding and appreciation of the underlying shapes. And this all goes to help uh, making your final painting look more realistic. So we've got little highlights on the edge of the face here. We can begin to shape little curves in the lips and so on little highlight under the chin and around the edge of the chin where that light is just catching it. And again, we can add more sparkle to those highlights later on. Don't forget, of course, this is just basic background colour, background colour and tone. For me, tone is probably the most important part of any painting, regardless of the colour. You can paint the whole chimp pink and blue if you wanted to. As long as we have the, the tones there, it would be valid. Now, at the same time, I'm going to add a little bit of colour into the eyes and a little bit less on this this eye which is more in shadow. So just create the edge of the eye like so. Stand back, squint at it to make sure the tones are looking effective. And we'll drop a little bit more of a highlight on the head there. And we'll have a little bit of a reflected light around here to help to balance it out. It would be wrong to assume there's no warm highlights in the shadow areas or certainly in the mid shadow areas because there's always going to be some kind of reflected highlight in there. And if you can see any hints at all of the red brown colour, pop a bit in. It won't be as bright as that when we finish, so don't worry about that. But background tone, background colour really help to bring your painting alive. Even on the ear on this side, I can just notice a hint of that tone, so I'll pop it in the top of the ear. So remember, warm colours come forward, cool colours go back. So this little touch of red brown on the ear will help to bring it forward. And I think we're about there. Uh, you can see quite clearly now the the balance between the warm highlights and the cool shadows. And these two complementary colours really do go together well. But what I want to do now is to start to build up some detail in there. Nothing too strong at the moment, so I'm still using a soft pastel. This time it's a blue-grey. So I'm going to start uh, around the brow. I want to get an impression of the texture of the brow as it comes round and into the eye area. And you're creating these little rounded strokes that will help to reinforce that shape then use your finger to reinforce that roundness. It softens off the pastel, of course, pushes it into the paper, but it helps to reinforce that shape. This is probably one of the most important aspects of pastel painting, is using your fingers to guide the pastel. You'll notice it's not fine texture at all. It's, it's just basic uh, texturizing shapes, if you like. Moving on to the ear, use your pastel just to create those little textures curves, so around that way and down that way. And then we'll carry on with the rest of the face. Again, always thinking about the shapes, the roundness of that shape and so on. So not quite as heavy as the other highlight. And these uh, highlights that I'm doing now, of course, have a, have a colour underneath, be it blue or be it red-brown. Let's work down the nose. You have the edge of the nose coming around here, which almost joins onto the lip and then it separates into the upper part of the nose. Again, just basic shaping. And we have a, a central ridge here, splits off either side. And coming down to the point of the nose, into the septum, which is a little ridge down here. I don't want to flood too many highlights on there. I want to preserve quite a lot of the blue. And as I said, if you lose all that blue, you can easily put some back. 
So more of a highlight on this side, underneath the nose. Very gentle, quite thick strokes, a little bit here, and a soft blue very highlight into the upper lip. Following the direction of those creases, the lip itself, you can mostly see the highlight on the bottom lip. Uh, we use the same pastel, I think, to, to reinforce the highlights or the reflections in the eye, because they're not bright white. So again, we can just carefully shape that around the eye. Remember, reflections curve around the eye because the eyeball is curved, they're not straight. And a little highlight in that eye, would, that if it's not strong enough at the end, we can reinforce it again. Tones, of course, are all relative. So if you put a light gray against a light background, it won't look terribly light in comparison. But if you put light gray on a black background, it'll look very light. So a wee bit more shaping on the brow there. And that should be our first level of detail sorted, I think. So that brings us to the halfway point. Join us after the break when we'll finish the painting.